Hello, my name is Axel Barrett and I'm the chief editor of bioplasticsnews.com. Today I'm going to speak about bio-based plastics. So when we use the word bio-based, we refer to the non-fossil origin of carbon. As you know, we need carbon to make plastics. And historically, we've been using fossil-based carbon. But today it's possible to make plastics from any kind of feedstock or biomass. Words such as bio-based, biosourced, renewable feedstock, plant-based or vegan all refer to the non-fossil origin of plastics. They almost mean the same thing. There's one big difference. It's whether or not you include carbon from animal origin. So that would be the difference between renewable feedstock and, for instance, plant-based or vegan plastic. Let's talk about generations. The first generation bioplastics uses food crops such as corn and sugarcane. The second generation uses waste. The third generation uses algae and seaweed to make plastic. And that's usually called blue bioplastic. And the fourth generation uses captured CO2 as feedstock. Let's talk about the advantages of bio-based plastics compared to fossil-based plastics. The most important one is a renewable feedstock. And then, of course, a reduced carbon footprint. Some bio-based polymers or plastics are lighter and thus more performant than their fossil-based counterparts. And of course, the valorization of the waste stream is a huge advantage. Let's now look at the disadvantages. First of all, the price. Bio-based plastics is more expensive than fossil-based plastics. Secondly, the available quantities are much lower than for fossil-based plastics. And then you have to ask yourself the questions, is the use of food crops to make plastic sustainable or responsible? And what about the use of GMO crops or intensive agricultural methods? Thank you for watching.